We are going to take a look at problem number nine on the review. Uh, I made this review, and I, if I could do it again, I honestly, I would have, I would have at least worded this problem differently. So if you're struggling with what exactly I'm trying to talk about here and what I'm trying to like get at, um, I get it. So I just want to go through this problem step by step on video, so you can see uh, what I was thinking when I was doing this problem. So let's get going. A skeet shooting competition lasts for 300 minutes. I just made that up. So skeet shooting is like shooting at little pieces of clay that are flying through the air. Uh, after 30 minutes, a shooter with terrible aim, we'll call him Bob, has shot four clay pigeons so far. Uh, and for the rest of the competition, we, uh, we know that Bob is going to hit a clay pigeon basically once every uh, 10 minutes. So that's what we know. Uh, independent variable, dependent variable. So let's start answering questions. Independent variable would be your input. So the way I think about it with independent and dependent variable, um, if I know this, then I can figure out this. So if I know how much time has gone by, I can figure out how many uh, clay pigeons have been shot. So the independent variable would be uh, time. Or maybe you wrote minutes there. That would be fine, too. Uh, the dependent variable is going to be the number of uh, pigeons uh, Bob shot. All right. Write a function representing the number of clay pigeons that Bob will hit as a function of time. This is where, uh, in this area here, why it get, where is where I think it gets a little bit uh, confusing and where I wish I wish I had done a better job setting up this problem. But but here's what I was thinking. So write a function representing the number of clay pigeons Bob will hit as a function of time. So I'm going to just use f of t. So as a function of time, we know that basically reading up here, we're basically 30 minutes into this experiment. Uh, before we even get to this point, aren't we? Because 30 minutes, we know he's already shot four of them. And so then after that, we're going to tack on the additional ones he, he shoots. So after that 30 minutes, it's going to be another, another one every 10 minutes. So after every 10 minutes of time, there's going to be another pigeon. So basically, my way of thinking about that is like every minute, he's kind of like a tenth of the way to getting another one shot, so like one-tenth uh, T. Some of you might have put an M there for minutes instead of T. That's totally cool if you did that too. But anyways, I'm thinking uh, F of T equals four plus one-tenth T. And now it says, what is the value of the function for an input of 60? So if I do an input of 60, that would mean I put a 60 right there. So I'm going to do that real quick. So four plus one-tenth times 60. So a tenth times 60 would be 6. So that would be 4 plus 6 equals 10. So the value of the function for an input of 60 is 10. Okay. What I'd like to point out there is that that input of 60 is actually 90 minutes into the competition because we're starting to use this function after 30 minutes uh, has gone by. So if we put a 60 in, that tells us we started at 30 minutes, then we tacked on and got 4. We tacked on another 60 minutes and got 10, which I know is kind of confusing, and that's where I wish I had written this problem different. Let's keep going. What does the value from part D represent? Okay, so we just talked about that. So after... 90 minutes, 60 plus the 30, Bob has shot, what did we say, 10 clay pigeons, which I assume is way better than I would have done. Uh, if it wasn't for gravity, I don't think I could shoot the ground, so... I'll call that pretty good. All right, let's keep going. How long will it take for Bob to shoot down 11 clay pigeons? Uh, all right, well, I kind of know the answer from looking at it. It took 90 minutes to do 10. 
Uh, so one additional pigeon would take an additional 10 minutes. So 90 plus 10, it's going to take 100 minutes. 100 minutes. But what if I didn't put that uh, two and two together there? How would I do that? Well, I would say 11 is the output equals 4 plus 1 tenth t. So I just put 11 as an output there, and I'm going to solve for t. So subtract 4, 7 equals 1 tenth t. I'll have to what? do it times it by the reciprocal, so times by 10. 70 equals T, so it takes 70 additional minutes, 30 minutes have already gone by, it's going to take 100 minutes to get 11 pigeons, so that's the long way of doing it. Uh, moving on, why doesn't the point 500, uh, 44 make any sense? Uh, well, the input is minutes and the output is how many pigeons were shot. We know that the competition only lasts for 300 minutes, so it wouldn't make any sense to have an input of 500 minutes, so I'll say... Uh, because uh, the competition only lasts uh, for 300 minutes. All right, what is an appropriate domain and range for this example? All right, let's get to it. I feel like this is an area where we're, we're all still kind of learning, so uh, this is a good one to take a look at. All right, set builder notation, we love you. The input, domain is the input, the input is time. So where can we find the time, all the time, such that, let's see, um, this thing starts at 30 minutes, doesn't it? So, uh, and then... So basically the reason I'm saying that is is once we've started this function, 30 minutes have already gone by. So I know the, the thing lasts for 300 total minutes, but 30 minutes already got chewed up right there before we even like got to this function. So really once we're using this function, there's only 270 minutes left. So we could put any T between... Uh, 0 and actually 270, because we're already 30 minutes into the game by the time we even look at this function. So it's in between, so t, that looks like a plus sign t, is in between 0 and 270, but it can be 0 and it can be 270, so put the or equals to there. And what, what kind of number is time? Uh, time... Time, well, you could have like 1.3 seconds. You could have like 1.3578 seconds. So it would really be all, all real numbers, right? You don't just have to go by second in increments. All right. Uh, range would be the output. Uh, I'll just say y, our y values. Okay, so that's going to be like the number of clay pigeons that we could uh, actually get as an answer, right? So we already know Bob shot four. So four is the absolute minimum because we already did it. So it's got to be bigger than that. Uh, so the Y has to be bigger than that. But we can only tack on an additional 270 minutes. Uh, so every it's going to take 10 minutes for him to get one each time. So that 270 minutes would be, uh, that would be 27, 27 more pigeons they, he could potentially get if we went all the way to the end of the competition. And he already shot the four, so 27 plus four is 31. Uh, the most pigeons uh, Bob's going to be able to get at this rate is going to be 31. So at any given time, he's going to have somewhere between four and 31 pigeons shot. And our Y value, or the number of pigeons shot at any given time, you're not going to shoot like a quarter of a pigeon or a tenth of a pigeon. Basically, you have to wait a whole 10 minutes and then another pigeon shot. So it's just going to go up in whole number increments because there's no point where you're going to be like, he shot 17.45 pigeons. It just it takes a while and then all of a sudden, bang, he got another one. So I'm going to say that they have to go up by uh, uh, whole numbers except they're going to be positive. I'm, I'm just going to say the natural numbers here. If you had said uh, whole numbers or integers, since we specified that it has to be between there and there, that would probably be fine too, wouldn't it? But I'm going to use the natural numbers, and that gets us there. 
that took a while, and again, uh, I'll probably try to write this a little differently uh, for the future, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of help, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.